Now, these ideas of Plato's aren't just ancient, scary, but irrelevant ideas from thousands of years ago. These mystery ideas about a new society became the prevailing views of the Enlightenment era and the foundation of what these illuminated individuals set out to achieve. The kind of society being described by Plato is the one that elite occultists everywhere are still trying to engineer. We can see how closely Plato's ideas match the ideas of the Illuminati when we consider their stated main goals. Dr. Timothy Dwight says, In the societies of Illuminati, the being of God was denied and ridiculed. The possession of property was pronounced to be robbery. Adultery, assassination, poisoning and other crimes of like infernal nature were taught as lawful and even as virtuous actions. To crown such a system of falsehood and horror, all means were declared to be lawful, provided the end was good. Of the goodness of the end, every man is to judge for himself. The great and good ends proposed by the Illuminati are the overthrow of religion, government and human society, civil and domestic. These they pronounce to be so good that murder and war, however extended and dreadful, are declared by them to be completely justifiable, if necessary, for these great purposes. So once more we see the idea that anything goes if the end justifies the means. We could call these Plato-inspired societies knowledge dictatorships or as Freemason Aldous Huxley called them in Brave New World Revisited, science dictatorships. The word science just comes from the Latin word for knowledge. Just as operative Freemasons knew that having a monopoly on trade secrets gave them power and position when building cathedrals and churches, speculative Freemasons equally understood that having a monopoly on knowledge and science would give them power to rule in these new republics. The Catholic Church had done the exact same thing in the Dark Ages. They tried to monopolise knowledge and learning to gain and retain power. From a spiritual perspective, Satan will always try and gain control of the flow of information because by doing that, he can control what people think, which will automatically control how they behave. Since people were turning away from the Catholic Church to science for understanding now, Satan had to change tack and get control of the information flows in science. In The Architecture of Modern Political Power, Daniel Putzner outlines the tactics employed by the Masonic elite. Among them, he says, is ostensible control over the noble by marketing institutionally accredited science as the only path to true understanding. Thus, the ruling class endeavours to discourage independent reason while exercising illusory power over human knowledge. This tactic of control through knowledge suppression and selective dissemination is reiterated in the anonymously authored document, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. The bookkeeper can be king if the public can be kept ignorant of the methodology of the bookkeeping. All science is merely a means to an end. The means is knowledge. The end is control. So take this example. Scientific institutions tell us that we have a man-made climate change problem. Now whether this is true or not, how many individual human beings have actually bothered to study the data or do their own research? Very few. The mass of humanity believes we have a man-made climate change problem because scientific institutions have said so and the mass media has passed the information on. This feeling that there are trustworthy experts in control of the information, bookkeepers as it were, stops the average person from going to it themselves. Just like people in the Dark Ages believed the church was trustworthy and therefore there was no need to go to the Bible themselves. Also, just like the Bible was shrouded behind impenetrable Latin then, so science is shrouded behind jargon and theories too complex for most people to bother with now. Effectively, we just say to the institutions, you just tell us what it says and we'll believe you. But what if, like Plato suggested, they don't give us the truth but only the information that will best manipulate us to achieve their goals? What if the end justifies the means? That's the essence of scientific or knowledge dictatorships. Those at the top are to have that secret serpent knowledge promised in the Garden of Eden and they are to use it to control the mass of people below who are to be kept in ignorance. The masses were not to be fed the truth but false information that made them believe they had the truth. Stephen Hawking once said that the enemy of true knowledge is not ignorance, it is the illusion of knowledge. If we think we already have it, we don't bother digging any deeper. 
By this method, people can be effectively manipulated and dominated. This is the foundation of satanic societies and institutions since Babylon. It's the same old pyramid structure, the kind which the Catholic Church employed to keep the masses in darkness in the Dark Ages. People just replaced a religious dictatorship with a scientific one. Independent thought was to be banished in the Enlightenment, and instead institutional science was to be used to control what the Muggles knew and what they believed. Aldous Huxley wrote in Brave New World Revisited that, Under a scientific dictatorship, education will really work with the result that most men and women will grow up to love their servitude and will never dream of revolution. There seems to be no good reason why a thoroughly scientific dictatorship should ever be overthrown. The priests of Roman Catholicism were merely replaced by a new breed of bookkeepers or information guardians on whom people would rely for knowledge. Jim Keith writes, As the Sun Moon cult lost some of its popularity, scientists were quick to take up some of the slack. According to their propaganda, the physical laws of the universe were the ultimate causative factors and naturally those physical laws were only fathomable by the scientific elite. Just as Latin was beyond the understanding of the average person, so was science. As the people moved away from religion, science was presented to fill the void and in doing so, the elite simply created a new type of religion called scientism. This is the idea that science explains everything and is the answer to everything, even when science itself can't support that worldview. Much of what we call science today is actually scientism, a mere philosophy masquerading as scientific truth. This new scientific religious system had two requirements, a false science in which people would put their trust, and secondly, an official institution to accredit, control and disseminate it to the masses. That institution was the British Royal Society. Virtually all the Royal Society's founding members were Freemasons. One could reasonably argue that the Royal Society itself, at least in its inception, was a Masonic institution. The Royal Society was to be a kind of propaganda machine, a forerunner to the modern day media who would sculpt and shape public opinion through the notions about science that they controlled and disseminated. The Royal Society was to science what the Catholic Church had been to Christianity in the Dark Ages.